Good morning. How are you all? Good? Good. Welcome. This is my third um, campus conversation, and I'm really happy to be able to open it this year. Today you'll hear the chancellor report. This is in my face. All right. I'm sorry. I have to listen first. All right. Today you'll hear the chancellor report on the state of the university. You'll also hear directly from our students in the School of Business and Economics how one of our campus efforts toward better retention, toward creating a feeling of belongingness, toward creating self and peer accountability have made a difference in their academic lives. You'll also hear from James Wallace, one of our campus members of IU, IU's Bicentennial Committee, about the truly wonderful celebrations that are happening on our campus and across all of Indiana University. I invite you to listen, to reflect, and to participate, especially in all of the wonderful things that will be happening. That said, I would like to share some of my more recent musings. This is, after all, my third campus conversation, and perhaps my thoughts will reflect some of yours. First, what a journey. And by that, I mean, what a ride. Over the past two years and two months, the Office of Academic Affairs will have moved twice. The folks housed in the library have moved to several different floors and several different buildings repeatedly since December, right before the holiday break, with only a couple of days' notice. The Chancellor's suite has changed into several offices in the Dunes Building, offices that some, perhaps even Chancellor Lowe, might consider somewhat uncharacteristic for a Chancellor's office. And I promise Andy and Gary, I won't talk about paint color anymore. And Kathy Malone will try hard to restrain herself about furniture and carpet. And Vice Chancellor Dickerson may even refrain from talking about the bookcase that took a year to, to arrive on campus. But I digress. Let's remember all of the amazing things that are happening facilities-wise on our campus. The chancellor will remind us, but I want to comment on the Academic Affairs Office space. As we look forward to our next move, we are grateful for our new space. This has been one very exciting year for us, and we thank you guys. Here's another part of this year, past year's ride. We, and I mean all of us, have institutionalized the retention strategy team. This team consists of about 25 to 30 members across all vice chancellor divisions. And we're always open to new members. I'm trying to recruit here. We established a retention strategy statement, which I shared in the past with all of you. Our journey has taken us to the next step as the campus-wide group has implemented many of its strategies and, as Chancellor Lowe will point out, we just may be seeing the fruits of their implementation. We've hired 10 new full-time faculty. If you're here, I ask that you stand and be recognized once again, and once again officially welcome to the Indiana University Northwest community. From biology, Elizabeth Hoskins. Psychology, Emily Pollock. Communication arts, Patrick Johnson. English, Thade Correa. Uh, chemistry physics, Muhammad Sajjad. I'm sorry if I've killed that name, I apologize. From the School of Business and Economics, Matthew Ludi and Rocio Payne. Dental Education, Lisa Borst. Radiologic Sciences, Nancy Smith. And from the library, our own Nico Casas. Welcome to all of you. Here's another highlight of our ride. Two years ago, Indiana University surveyed all of our professional and bi-weekly staff using the Gallup as a survey provider. The staff in the Division of Academic Affairs requested a meeting or a series of meetings during which they would be encouraged to speak about how to make them feel more valued by the university. We had the first meeting in spring of 2019. The feedback collected from this meeting was reported to the university leadership the, at the Indiana University Northwest Council. The council determined that this kind of opportunity to provide feedback should be available to all staff from all divisions. So now a team of staff is working as we speak on creating spaces and opportunities for this to happen. 
This team is also working on how to operationalize some of the suggestions that have come out of these meetings. Look for more to come. The bottom line on this one is that all of our employees are valued and we are seeking ways to make sure we all know it. One of the new initiatives that happened over the past ac academic year will be spurring our activities for the 1920 academic year. Following an IU Northwest Council discussion on innovation during tight budgetary times, some members of the campus leadership drafted a proposal for a Chancellor's Academic Innovation Grant to fund collaborative innovations between academic affairs and student affairs and to develop new programs to benefit students. This proposal was accepted by our Chancellor and funds were set aside to encourage grant proposals that supported a broad range of projects that are designed to contribute to student success through increased enrollment and or retention. Four proposals were awarded this year. I'm just going to name the title of the proposal and the people who proposed the proposal. Uh, the first one was Purpose Plus Plan equals persistence, and that came from Beth Tyler in Student Affairs. The second proposal is to create an IU Northwest Leadership Academy for our students. Chris Young, Anita Bena, Gianluca Di Muzio, Kristen Heisken, Kevin McElmary, Micah Pollock, Crystal Shannon, Ellen Sarleta, and Tia Walker. The third proposal from Monica Solina Saunders is the development and implementation of an interdisciplinary forensic sciences degree. That sounds fun. <laughs> and the fourth program was submitted, a uh, program proposal was submitted by Kelly Kanaga from the School of the Arts. It is a lecture series and a visiting fellows program. I congratulate all of these awardees and look forward to hearing about their work and thank them for caring about our students' success. When you see them, please ask them about their projects. I was going to read all the proposals and I thought you might get bored. One of our priorities over the past several years has been to pass on to the forefront of online education. To date, we are second only to IU East of the regional campuses with regard to online course offerings. From 2015 to 2019, IU Northwest has increased its fully online course section offerings by 130%. We went from 629 fully online to, in 2019, 1,444 online sections. So that percent represents a big number of, of sections as well. We've also increased the number of sections that include an online component. We've, we've increased by 136%, 683 in 2015 and 1,609 in 2019. The, these numbers are compelling. They also reflect the work of the faculty as they train to use an online pedagogical uh, platform and the work of our staff who work with our students from admissions to enrollment to advising and with faculty as they learn to perfect their instruction using an online platform. This is one of our futures. You all have adopted this. I am grateful and our students, present and future, are grateful. Additionally, a faculty group has designed a series of best practices in online instruction. Not destruction, I meant instruction. These best practices are based on the standards outlined in Quality Matters. This will be presented to the faculty this fall 2019 semester. I thank this group for their good work on this part of our ride. One of the faculty roles at IU is participation in research. I'm so proud to announce that for IU Northwest Celebration of Faculty Research Day, which will be held on September 27th, the committee has received 38 proposals. We worried that we wouldn't get enough, so this is fantastic. I invite all of you to attend, because this day will not be what some of you may consider a boring academic conference day. 
Our intention is to have faculty present their research to faculty, staff, and students with regard especially, especially to why their research makes them passionate about what they do. I truly look forward to this celebration because I know already that our faculty and their research serve as the foundation to the work we do with our students. IU Northwest continues to be the most diverse of the IU campuses. This part of our ride continues to remind me of the word awesome. We are awesome. As the Chancellor says, we're the university of the future, but we're doing it right now. In the 1819 academic year, 32% of our employees are Hispanics, African American, and Asians. That's awesome. We must keep this up. Our students deserve faculty and staff with whom they feel affinity, and they deserve the experience of diversity on campus as they pr prepare to be qualified leaders in our communities. And just when we thought the 1819 ride was over, there's even more. Nursing Explorer, a searchable database of nursing programs across the U.S., recently published its annual ranking of best value nursing schools. Guess which nursing program topped the Indiana list? Woo! <laughs> Congratulations on this recognition. And to top that, the Accreditation Commission for Education and Nursing granted initial accreditation for the Master of Science in Nursing Family Nursing Practitioner Program. Congratulations. And while we're noting recognitions, Indiana University Northwest Health Information Management Program was ranked number one in the nation in the list of top 40 best bachelor's degrees in health information management. Simply awesome, we're proud. Some additional, I'm not gonna go on forever, I promise. Some additional important recognitions were received by, for example, our Dean Mark Hoyer, Professor, professor of Psychology. He received the 2019 PA Mac Award for his distinguished service to teaching from the Indiana University Faculty Academy on Excellence in Teaching, FACET. <laughs> Bill Alagresa, professor of English, was selected as one of 25 Indiana University bicentennial professors. And he'll be giving public presentations across the state during this next academic year. This one I'm gonna blow, but don't tell her. Anna Madviku. Uh, Anya, I'm sorry. Our dear Anya, professor of philosophy, was named a Fulbright Distinguished Chair of Public International Law and will spend the 2019-20 academic year at the Raoul Wallenberg Institute of Human Rights and Humanitarian Law in Lund, Sweden. Tin Chun Lin, Professor of Economics, received the Indiana University Herman Frederick Lieber Award for Outstanding Teaching. Is he here? There he is. <laughs> Spencer Courtright, Associate Professor of Biology, was recognized by the Shirley Hines Land Trust Bring Nature Home Program for his longtime work cultivating native vegetation to provide a source of shelter and food for local wildlife. <laughs> Northwest Indiana Business uh, Magazine in recognized IU Northwest as, as the best university. <laughs> as the best university to attain an MBA for the second year in a row, and IU Northwest as the best university online degree program for the third year in a row. As I promised, I won't go on with the list of successes which have occurred over last year's ride. I'm sure that all of you who have experienced successes over last year will agree that these things don't happen in a vacuum. You have colleagues and friends, perhaps even family members that have helped, cheered you on, or participated in some way in your achievements. I will finish by saying thank you. I hope that you all know that I really value the work that you do and the commitment that you have to our community and to our students. And with that, I'm pleased to introduce to you our faculty org president, Susan Simmer.
Good morning, and welcome to the 2019 Campus Conversation. I'd like to welcome you back to campus as we begin the 2019-2020 academic year. Uh, as Vicki mentioned, I'm Susan Zinner, the faculty org president. Now, one of the best things about teaching at a university is that we get to start anew twice a year, and other professions are not nearly as lucky. We have a clearly defined beginning and ending for much of our work. In the administrative ethics class I teach, I use films, both recent and not so recent, to uh, illustrate different ethical principles. And I was thinking about starting fresh every semester, and the film City Slickers came to mind. In the film, if you haven't seen it, Billy Crystal tells his friend, who is facing both divorce and financial challenges, remember when we were kids and we'd be playing ball and the ball would get stuck in a tree and we'd yell, do over. Your life is a do over, he tells his friend. You get a clean slate. Well, all of our lives may not be a do over, but this one part of our work lives is. Think about it. August 26th is still a few days away. Your Canvas grade books are totally blank. Nobody has failed any assignments yet. And this could be the semester where you keep caught up on grading and committee assignments. And if it's not, the next do-over semester is just around the corner. And for those of you working hard to prepare for this fall, remember the words of education scholar E.C. McKenzie who said, some students drink at the fountain of knowledge, others just gargle. So here's, here's hoping all of you have students who drink deeply. So once again, welcome, and I'd like to turn things over now to Student Government Association President, Layla Nawab. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Dr. Zinner mentioned, my name is Layla Nawab. I am a chemistry major starting my senior year on Monday, and I'm the president of Student Government Association. I would also like to welcome everyone here to the campus conversation as the semester begins, and I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to not only represent the students, but speak on behalf of the Student Government Association and all of the students here at IU Northwest. I'm grateful for this opportunity to speak to you about what student government is doing over the summer and what we've been working hard on to start this academic year. Throughout my term as senator last year, I was able to communicate with many students, but realized that our student government was not representing everyone as well. Our student government was strong, but our representation for the different academic fields was not there. All of our student government members were coming from the College of Arts and Sciences, and this is where a majority of our student surveys were coming from. Our student government members knew that we had to change this, so we got rid of four positions, a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior representative, and amended our constitution to create five new positions for each academic division. Our new College of Arts and Sciences, School of Education, School of Business and Economics, School of the Arts, and College of Health and Human Services representatives will not only be able to notify us of the student surveys of their respective academic divisions that we might have been missing out on, but we are also hoping to build a greater connection with our campus community by having more liaisons between the students and the campus officials. Over the course of the summer, our SGA has been working hard to ensure that all of our members will be preparing for the upcoming academic year. Our summer meetings have primarily focused on teaching new members of their roles and responsibilities and making sure that the returning members are aware of their new roles in their new positions. We have also been increasing our presence on campus and in the Northwest Indiana community. We have been present at many campus events happening in the summer, but also went out in the community and represented IU Northwest during the Pierogi Fest Polka Parade. With the help of Physical Plant, our crazy Hawaiian themed float was enjoyed by everyone. From the children who wanted small candies or lays from us, to the adults who were happy to show their IU pride, and even to the one Purdue fan that was proud to scream, go Boilermakers, as we were passing by. <laughs> Our executive board members have been working hard over the summer and have been present at each of the events for new student orientation. I have personally welcomed the incoming students in the morning at each event, and our, mem and our members have sat on panels with both students and parents to tell them about student government and, the ma and many of our initiatives over the summer. 
Most of the students on campus might be coming from institutions where there was no presence of a student government or student council, while others are coming back to school after taking some time off and might not be aware of the different university organizations and student organizations on campus. Making sure that all students are aware of what student government provides and that they do have a voice on campus and their opinions are extremely important to me and the members of our student government this year. Along with student representation and awareness, our members have been working hard to help increase retention rates this year. With the help of our Dean of Students, Dean Tyler, we have started a peer mentoring program that is open to any incoming student, regardless of their major. We want to help welcome and guide incoming freshmen as they adopt to the college academic environment at IU Northwest. This initiative was taken to help with the transition from high school or a previous institu institution to IU Northwest and to provide a sense of community and belonging by upperclassmen who were once in their shoes. These mentors are serving as another campus resource for these IU Northwest incoming students. During new student orientation, we wrote down the contact information of majors, of students and majors of the incoming students that were interested in this program. From the short tabling that we did, we got over 50 uh, students from 15 different majors showing their interest in the program. The next steps with this program are to set up students with mentors who are in good academic standing and have the same goals as we do with the program to better the students' experience on campus and give them a sense of belonging. For the upcoming year, we are working on increasing student government awareness and have plans on working with many campus officials that would also like to increase student engagement. For example, we will be working alongside the Office of the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs to celebrate the bicentennial of IU and are also working with many departments to discuss the student recommendations. Listening to the student body and advocating for the rights and well-being of students is the essence of our position on campus, and we will be doing this throughout the year in any way we can. Again, I'd like to welcome everyone to the 2019-2020 academic year. Thank you. Now I'd like to welcome Chancellor Lowe to the podium to give his chancellor address. Uh, thank you, Layla, and uh, good morning, and uh, welcome to a new academic year <clears throat> at IU Northwest. Uh, this is Indiana University's bicentennial year. Our official anniversary is the 20th of January, 2020, and 2019-20 also marks 60 years that IU Northwest has been on our Glen Park site. There are some important differences as the academic year begins, but first, there are a number of colleagues to thank for today's program and arrangements. Uh, Jerry Pat Gabbert, Vicki Roman Lagunas, uh, and Beth Tyler, uh, they all took the principal lead for planning today's event, uh, along with other colleagues uh, who had responsibility for the many moving parts that will make for an enjoyable day for us. <clears throat> and those include James Wallace, Marisa Villalobos, uh, Emily Bannis, Becca Hendricks, Erica Rose, Ed Marilla, uh, Terry Ann Defenser, Aaron Pigors, but Rob Seals, Tim O'Donnell, Kathy Arfkin, Kathy Arfkin, Brian Thomas Chops, Kathy Hall, Helen Harmon, Kathy Malone, Candy Bushnell, Karen Peterson, Mike Beasy, Katie McQuillan, and our facilities and operations colleagues. Please join me in thanking them. <clears throat> Uh, the 2018-19 academic year and a busy summer went by very quickly, but we should not overlook some important things that have been accomplished since we met here last year in August of 2018. Uh, a major project was the submission of our AQIP systems portfolio and its unqualified acceptance and approval by the Higher Learning Commission. As we enter a new accreditation pathway, thanks to uh, John Novak, Cynthia O'Dell, and Vicki Roman Lagunas uh, for their leadership uh, of the collection, organization, and editing uh, of the large amount of data that supports our continual uh, our, and continuing regional accreditation status, as well as the other colleagues who served on working groups and helped to compile the information. Our portfolio documented our campus commitment to continuing improvement, which is also evidenced in other accomplishments during the last year. We had the opportunity to demonstrate our strategic commitment to community-based engagement in the application that we submitted for the Carnegie Classification Recognition. 
We do not yet know the results, but thank you to Ellen Jarletta and the Center for Urban and Regional Excellence, uh, uh, as well as all the colleagues who embrace community-based engagement and have, had, ha and have made it integral to the academic experience of so many of our students each year. Uh, we've spent time since the end of spring semester substantially under construction, you may have noticed, uh, <clears throat> which ultimately will result in uh, very tangible campus improvements. Uh, the Anderson Library renovation with new systems, lighting, and ceilings will be complete in mid-September, and the change is already noticeable. Full services are available as work wraps up, so please do not hesitate to send students to our library where Latrice Brooker and her colleagues look forward to working with them. The Library Plaza has also been redesigned and should become a very attractive gathering place for our campus community. The parking lot next to Hawthorne has been repaved, which resulted in, in some additional disability spaces. Academic Affairs, as you heard, is moving into new offices in Hawthorne. And the space formerly known as Lindenwood Hall looks much better as grass. Expenditures on facilities and infrastructure improvements during 2019, not all of which are as visible as these major projects, represent a total investment in our campus of $11.5 million. Uh, many thanks to a Andy Kaposius and all of his facilities and operations colleagues for managing an extensive and complex set of major projects in a constrained time frame during this summer. And I should recognize the contractors as well who do good work and were all firms based in the city of Gary. We look forward to them being finally finished uh, in the next several weeks. And since there is still work going on in the library and the plaza area, please be helpful to students who may find that part of the campus a bit confusing and help them on their way. Something else to mention about facilities is that improvements in systems, including the new ones in the library, and new, more efficient light fixtures uh, have already resulted in not only better interior and exterior lighting, but a savings of several hundred thousand dollars, which helps to relieve pressure on our operating, uh, campus operating budget and makes it easier to devote resources to the other priorities that underwrite our students' success. 2019-20 also marks the start of expanded athletics programming at a more challenging level as we enter the Chicagoland Collegiate Athletic Conference, an integral and it's an integral part of our academic and enrollment strategy. Our teams were very successful last year, and they are well-placed to continue to make us proud and represent us well in the new conference. But there's something else that is very different and a definite improvement compared, compared to the last four or five fall semesters. Our enrollment is set to increase compared to fall semester 2018. All of the essential components of our enrollment and revenue picture have improved. Recruitment has brought in larger numbers of new first year and transfer students, and we have retained more of our students. Yes. Our year-over-year -year enrollment figures as of last evening are uh, 916 new students, an increase of 4.2 percent. Transfer enrollment continues to hold up, showing the promise of co-location and partnership with Ivy Tech here in the Arts and Sciences building. First to second year retention is moving towards 66 percent. Total enrollment at this point so far is 3,725 students, which is about a 4% increase over fall semester 2018 when there were 3,581 students. And we are already at 99% of our credit hour projection for the semester. So we did it. <clears throat> this is the result for which we have been working for several years. And if we maintain the focus on students' success and degree completion, we can begin to look beyond stabilization to modest growth. This is a major achievement for us in a very adverse environment and reflects the di diligent, imaginative work of colleagues across the campus. To name only some, Dorothy Frank and her team in admissions and strategic recruitment, 
Gina Pertle and her colleagues in financial aid, Veronica Williams and all of our advisors, Jennifer Rimes, Kathy Hall, and the student leadership team for the successful new student orientation program, the retention strategy team convened by Vicki Roman Lagunas, faculty colleagues who work so hard to create engaging, fulfilling learning experiences for our students, and since enrollment and retention relies on the work of each of us, thank you to everyone who takes the time each day to work with our students and lets them know that we are devoted to their success and are glad that they are here. Thank you. <clears throat> it's good work. The fall semester registration is not quite finished, but this is shaping up to be a very good, very good news for our revenue and financial position as well by protecting and perhaps enhancing our critical operating assets, including and especially campus employment. Above all, it provides the resources that support our central purpose and mission, our students and their success. But we, but we must keep before us that any new enrollment stability that we may achieve is not, in the current environment, stable and can all too easily dissipate and quickly revert to decline. Diligent attention to individual students, engagement with data and best practices, and imagination will continue to be essential to not only maintaining the current enrollment status, but consolidating and improving on it. Student recruitment, retention, and degree completion will continue to make up our highest strategic priority. And I think that what we have achieved for this semester points a way to mitigate the dynamic demographic shifts of the mid-2020s. <clears throat> to get to this place has required planning, hard work, and restraint right across the campus. Every colleague who contributed by, for example, taking extra time with students or being careful with expenditures has earned sincere thanks. We have been able to manage a very difficult situation very effectively, even if it does not always feel that way. As those who work with our students every day well know, the overarching cause of the steady enrollment decline in recent years, uh, calculated by our IU Northwest economists at 75% of the change, has been competition from hourly employment, behind which is high levels of financial need. Let us call it poverty. And the complexities of our students' busy lives that usually do not stray too far from money issues. IU Northwest will participate in an IU a uh, student financial wellness survey this, this autumn to give us a deeper understanding of the situations that hinder our students' persistence in degree completion, a topic to which we have devoted a good deal of practical attention during the last year. Some preliminary data indicate that our students face significant problems of food and particularly housing insecurity, either of which is a powerful barrier to student success. We are strengthening advising and getting better and better at finding the tools needed to help our students handle the individual obstacles and emergencies that get in the way of their continuing enrollment. We're starting to see the results. Now the challenge is to hold on to those results by retaining the students who we recruit. We have established, as Vicki mentioned, a, a Student Success Innovation Fund which was an IU Northwest Council initiative and we're supporting those four excellent projects this year. And we're looking at incentives so that students will want to enroll earlier in the registration cycle, which helps both students and the campus to plan, but also enables us to get a jump on resolving problems that students might in encounter. <clears throat> Special thanks to all of the colleagues who have referred students to those who can help them get beyond the immediate problems or alerted offices to students who can use assistance. And thank you to Veronica Williams and Beth Tyler who are in the lead for helping students to tackle their urgent situations, as well as the marketing and communications team for messaging to students and colleagues about referrals of students who encounter difficulties. This more intentional, systematic approach also originated in the in IU Northwest Council discussions. Each of these action steps contributes to levels of student success, enrollments, and revenues that enable us to support the services that help our students to complete their degrees. The signature challenge at IU Northwest is to be successful at serving the diverse student population that is the future 
of American higher education, which confers an important element of dignity, even nobility, on what we do each day. The loss of enrollment and financial resources required a careful, planful campus response to, to both keep a balanced budget and preserve the resources that are necessary to effectively serve, and serve our students and position the campus for the future. Our approach to managing enrollment decline relied first on excellent financial stewardship and leadership by Michelle Dickerson. We have treated discouraging projections seriously, examined accounts to get a full picture of our available resources, planned conservatively, and our operating budgets are balanced every year. Still, with an eye to finding resources to invest in initiatives that will serve the campus and our students in the future. There have been steps that, over the years, have helped to bring us to where we find ourselves now. Restraint on expenditures and personnel planning in offices across the campus have helped us to manage the resources that have been available. Along with fewer students, there are fewer of us, fewer of us working here, a transition that we've been able to handle through attrition and reallocation. Faculty engagement with the Reimagining the First Year Teaching and Learning Project has helped to enrich the academic experience and improve student retention. The difficult fiscal years when faculty and professional colleagues received a 1% salary increase, followed by none at all the next year, adjusted expenditure growth, and has enabled full annual raises since. But even then, our lower paid hourly colleagues received full raises every year. And within the next year, IU Northwest will achieve the university's commitment to a $15 per hour minimum wage, which is very competitive in Northwest Indiana. <clears throat> Atypical for higher education in the la public higher education in the last decade, IU has authorized salary increases, modest to be sure, but IU has authorized salary increases each year since 2010. And we also monitor salary equity and compression and continue to repair problems that have been identified among faculty colleagues. Through all of this, something that stands out is that we have put campus finances and employment on a very solid footing. A job at IU Northwest is a good job. President McRobbie recently sent each of us a letter that details our full compensation, salary plus benefits, which compares very well by region standards, particularly for full-time jobs with regular hours. Our continuing efforts to improve salaries and compensation for hardworking colleagues are, of course, supported by good enrollments. Good jobs are worth protecting in their own right, but good jobs and dedicated, skilled colleagues in all of the roles that support academic success best serve the academic experience and the individual futures of our students. Today's program will shortly shift the focus to the accomplishments of our students, which, of course, is the payoff for all of the wor our, our work in their behalf. Our new students are, once again, receiving a, copy, a free copy of this year's One Book, One Campus, One Community selection, Hanif Abdurraqib's They Can't Kill Us Till They Kill Us, and the author will visit campus on Thursday, 17 October, so please plan to read the book, join the conversation, and meet the author. There will also be a briefing uh, by James on the many activities that will take place on campus and around the university to commemorate IU's bicentennial. An important bicentennial activity is the comprehensive campaign that at the university level has already exceeded $3 billion. Here at IU Northwest, with the better part of a year of campaigning to go, we have already achieved our campus goal of $8 million. We have so far raised $8.3 million and counting, and we will keep going till next June. Many thanks and congratulations to Jerry Pat Gabbard and our University Advancement and External Affairs colleagues for the fine work in leading our campus campaign. A critical reason that we reached our campaign goal is the generosity of colleagues who work at IU, uh, IU Northwest, or have retired after spending their careers here. Uh, 
as of 31 December 2018, 350 employees and retirees contributed $3.6 million of the 8.3 that we have raised. $3.6 million for the bicentennial campaign from among us here on campus. Uh, scholarships have been our top priority, and each campus colleague who has made a bicentennial campaign gift has my sincere thanks, and that of Indiana University. <clears throat> we could not have done it without you. The beneficiaries are IU Northwest students into the future. So thank you once again, and there are still plenty of opportunities to contribute to the bicentennial campaign. Now, among the ways we thank colleagues for their work are the Friday afternoon receptions that we started last academic year. The receptions appear to have been well received, and again this year, the campus executive leadership will sponsor receptions for our colleagues in the autumn and the spring after faculty organization meetings. The first reception will take place on Friday, 18 October 2019, and we look forward to seeing you there. So thank you once again to all for the hard work that enables us to look ahead in a different and a more encouraging way. Your efforts show what is possible when enrollment and student success are everyone's job. The work, of course, continues up till next weekend's census to wrap up fall semester enrollment. This very promising threshold is a beginning that can strengthen IU Northwest in behalf of our students. Let us make it a new beginning that sets our course for a challenging but ultimately successful and rewarding future. Welcome back and thank you. Thank you again, Chancellor Lowe. I am Beth Tyler. I'm gonna invite our panelists to come up and um, I just wanna say a few words about how it is that we are here today. And I want to also, um, although I think we say it a lot, Student success is our number one priority, and every single one of us in this room is a key ingredient to that success. So not only those of us who have the pleasure to work directly with our students on the day-to-day -day basis in the classroom and outside of the classroom, but every one of you on this campus who is working in a capacity to make the campus run. So that involves everyone in the facilities and operations, IUN Police Department, anybody who's here in food service, uh, development, university advancement. If you do not have the pleasure of working directly with our students, I feel for you because that is the joy of my daily work. Uh, but I want to just remind you of how critical your contribution is to that project. So thank you again for everyone for that. Um, I don't get out enough and I don't have enough opportunities in my job to witness students excelling and I take every opportunity to do that when I'm invited. And so the, the way that I met the young people that are here on our stage today is uh, at the School of Business and Economics Spring Semester Student Showcase this past May. Um, I showed up there on a Friday morning and I didn't really know what I was gonna find. Um, but what I found was some really fabulous energy and some really wonderful success stories from our students. And um, it's really remarkable to see the ways in which they flourish when they help one another and when they are helped by one another. Um, we didn't have time, of course, to put their names on your program, so there they are on screen. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you who we have here, and then I'm gonna um, help them have a conversation to tell you a little bit about their experience. First up, Anna Zapeta. Anna will be a, a junior this year, majoring in accounting and finance. As a first-generation student, Anna feels strongly that STARS has been a necessary guide during her first two years of college. Anna prepares to continue as a star. Anna plans to continue as a STARS mentor for the next two years to help incoming students feel as comfortable at IU Northwest as the program has made her feel. Anna has two younger siblings whom she hopes will one day follow her footsteps to IU Northwest. Anna, want to wave, say hello? 
Lauren Sanders, also in the class of 2021, is pursuing a business degree with a minor in human resource management. Being in the STARS program has, a, has been a blessing to her life because it helps her to continue to grow and come out of her shell, both academically and personally. She also enjoys being part of the STARS program because she knows that she is making a difference, whether big or small, in another student's life. Anna? Nicole Morawski, a proud alumni of an Indiana, alumna, excuse me, of Indiana University Northwest, graduated this past May with a Bachelor of Science degree in business with a major in accounting finance. While a STARS mentor, Nicole's goal was to change the way students think about going to college so that they come to campus not only to learn in the classroom, but also to take advantage of activities and other out of the classroom opportunities. Nicole currently works as a staff accountant for a transportation company in Northwest Indiana. Zeke Williams, class of 2022, is an accounting and finance major, a recent change from business, with a minor in marketing. Zeke is excited to learn about these new areas and more in his next three years at IU Northwest. Zeke had a rocky start in his first year, but, the help of, but with the help of his star's friends, he totally flipped on his academics, his words, and he is proud to announce that he is now excelling. Say hello to Zeke. And as many of you know, Helen Marie Harmon is the Director of Student Success, Engagement, and Career Development, and the Director of the STARS Peer Mentoring Experience Program in the School of Business and Economics. This past summer, Helen presented at the European First Year Conference in Cork, Ireland, accompanied by IU Northwest students Samantha Chua and Daniel Rushke, Danielle Rushke, excuse me, and she has recently been accepted to present a session at the International Learning Conference in Valencia, Spain, next July 2020. Let's congratulate, say hello, Helen. All right, we have mics that we're sharing. I don't know if you're turned on. If you tap them, you can tell. I'm going to change my location here. So we're really just going to have an informal conversation. Excuse me. I think there will be time for questions toward the end. So if you have them, uh, put a pin in that, as they say. And I apologize for those of you who can't see me although I'm not the, important, the most important thing here today. Um, Helen, I'm going to start with Helen, because I want to ask Helen to tell us a little bit about the STARS, STARS Students Together Achieving and Reaching Success. Can you tell us a little bit about the program, how it got started, how it works, something like that? Sure. The STARS program started where most of my, actually all of my thoughts and projects happen in my head and doodled in a journal. And it was something that I saw in the students having been here, now my 26th, 27th year, I lose count. I've seen a lot of students, I've seen a lot of issues, and I've seen a lot of growth. And what was most impactful as I put the pieces together was the fact that our students depend more on each other than they depend on anyone else. How they depend on each other was not only an eye-opener for me, but it was also part of my idea generator. So, in summer 2017, right before we flooded over in Dunes, I went to Cindy Roberts, our dean, said, I have this idea. Was it fully fleshed out? I simply knew it had to happen. Cindy said, go for it. I said, okay. And then we moved to the library first floor, <laughs> fishbowl. That is where I made it happen. I'd like to consider myself a creative visionary with innovative ideas. And what started in my heart now beats and my soul breathes because of the students and stars. Thank you. 
Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for. So I'm gonna ask our students to tell us some stories. And the first one is for the mentees. And so we'll go from your left to right. We'll start with Anna. And uh, go ahead, Anna, tell us, uh, try to remember who you were when you first came to IU Northwest as a first year student and describe the person that you were then. Well, my first year being a freshman, um, I was a very shy person. I did not like clubs. I did not like speaking in front of people. Um, <laughs> um, I never imagined doing any of this stuff. So as I told Taylor the other day, um, Helen dragged me, literally dragged me into this group because honestly, if it was for me, I would have said, no, I do not want to join. Um, but now that I, I've been in STARS for two years, it has been a life changing and I will never ever regret it. I have opened up, I have seen things in a different perspective, I have met a lot of people. Um, it is really something that I will forever be thankful for. Great. Lauren, who were you when you first got here? Um, I was kind of like Anna, definitely shy coming into college and I contacted Helen um, the first week of school, still shy, but I, need, I know I needed to introduce myself to my professors. And from then on, I will never forget going up to her and finally taking that first step. Okay, we're jumping over to Zeke. Uh, like she said, it was a really rocky start. I mean, any college student, I mean, I would say like any freshman's nervous at first. I mean, you could say you're excited, but I was nervous. I was nervous as heck. But Helen jumped to me at orientation. I was still shaky about joining the stars, just like Anna. But like after that first couple of weeks, I was going home from classes like that. Like I wasn't even staying on campus, and I felt like, why am I in college if I'm not doing anything to be involved? And like that's the first thing Helen told me was like, if you you are what you make out of college, which is the truest statement that I've ever heard in my life. Because if you don't put anything into it, you're not going to get anything out of it. Which, I mean, you many people know by now, you got jobs and everything. <laughs> but, but, um, anyways, like the first couple of weeks of school, I was struggling. I was not going to class at sometimes, and that wasn't like me. Like, I don't like to brag, but I was an honor student in my small high school in Lake Station. So, like, I was always involved at school. Like I was in the sports or I was doing something in other clubs. But like when I got to college, I felt like a nobody, which I mean, I still do at some points. But anytime, anytime now, like I need help with something, Helen's there to that. And like text message through summer, like I was busy all summer and she was there. But my story about like how I'm here is really because when I first started off, like I said, my grades are dropping and like an uh, easy class like psychology, I fell all the way to a D minus. And like in October, I texted Helen and she was, I was like, I was freaking out because I was like, should I drop this class or what should I do? And I was a mess. Like, you think my hair is this crazy? It was crazier then. <laughs> and, but after that, like, Helen got me another mentor, like my great mentor Sam out there, and she knows he's out there. She couldn't help me with everything, but. Helen found me somebody else where, like in a couple weeks, I had a big paper due at the end of the psychology semester, and she flipped me like that. Like, I went from a D minus all the way to an A by the end of December. And, yeah. But, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better program like this, because, I mean, you don't get this on every campus. Yeah, they have mentoring programs and all that, but you don't have a close-knit family. I mean, it sounds cliche, but you don't have a close-knit family like this because Sam I can call as my sister I can call these as my sisters too now because I mean I come to them for anything but I mean it's just amazing how much you can do if you work together like I it sounds cliche but I'm I'm serious because I mean I would not be anywhere I am without them and yeah Fantastic. Okay, since we skipped over Nicole since she did not have the benefit of a, of a ment she was not a mentee can you tell us about how you got involved in the STARS program? So I was approached by Helen because I was always in the school of business. Um, I love being at school, so I spend a lot of time here. She was like, you should be a mentor for uh, my STARS group. So I started here and um, 
It was my first year, I was a senior, and I came in with open arms, and I had him, I got my first mentee, Paul, and he came from um, lower income town and didn't have really good high school backgrounds, didn't really know um, too much, kind of started at the lower end of the college spectrum, the classes where you don't get any credits that don't really count for anything. Um, started out as real rocky for Paul. Um, D's, S, kind of like what, what Zeke was saying. And um, with my willingness to help him and his eager to learn, he excelled and he ended up on the chancellor's list um, this past school year. So. Super remarkable, and we still talk to this day. Paul has had a dream to venture out um, to Bloomington, and so um, he thought that it would be a good step in his life to kind of like grow up and live on his own, and he wanted to step away from his home life around here. He didn't really have, come from a strong home life, and so he texted me the other day that he's moving into his apartment down in Bloomington, and I told him if he ever needed help, although I, I'm graduated, um, I would always help him. So it's good to see that my mentee is excelling in life, and I'm super proud of him. So, Thank you, Nicole. I feel a responsibility to acknowledge that it is not our goal that students transfer to Bloomington. <laughs> But we do acknowledge that sometimes it's the best decision for them, and to the extent that we can help them with that, we're happy to do that. And we do get credit if he graduates. I just want to point that out as well. When he graduates. Thank you. Um, so I'm curious now, and we can go left to right or be uh, organic and flexible here. I'm interested in how the way you spend your time on campus, and Nicole, you can weigh in any way you want since you're not on campus in, in, a, in, a, in a school way. Um, how, do you, how does the way you spend on campus changed since you got involved in STARS? I guess I could start again. Um, so since I started in STARS, I really thought that being in all these professional memberships is super important for any um, student that's on campus. And I do have to say, now that I have secured a full-time job as a staff accountant, just a couple minutes down the road at a transportation company, that is the one thing that they really look for in, on your resume. And that's the, mainly the re main reason why they hired and why I standed out amongst the other candidates. Um, they noticed that I was a president of a club here for the American Marketing Association, that I was a, the vice president of finance for it. I started my own, um, the Red Hawk Enterprise. I was one of the co-founders here. Um, I was a brand ambassador and a, and a secretary of Love Your Melon on campus, and then I was also a mentor of the store, um, STARS and school business. And I do have to say that being involved in campus clubs and opening up to your peers and wanting to learn and engage with the students and the faculty of the school really does open up a lot of paths. And I think that being a mentor, you can you know, engage with your peers and let them know that it is super important to not only be in one club, but many. Anna, could you speak a little bit about how the way, how you spend your time on campus has changed since you got involved with STARS? Sure, um, mostly because when I first started here, I thought, okay, you go to class and then you go home and then that's it. Well, no, you kind of have to stay here, because when you go home, like Helen says, at home you got bed, you got Netflix, you got TV, you got all these comfy things, and then homework just, just goes to the side. Well, staying here, being with like everyone, like we have our little space, we have a little room, um, being here with everyone, you kind of like encourage each other to do your homework, you kind of encourage yourself to like study for a test that you have maybe next week. Um, I, I loved being in there because Chase, who is now a graduate, um, he used to help me with everything, like literally everything. Um, <clears throat> he has opened so many doors for me. So being here has helped me improve in class work and outside of class work, because he has helped me outside of, of getting me started to where I want to be, because other than being an accountant, I was also thinking about being a 
landlady of real estate. So he has helped me like learn some of that and then helping me decide which, way, which path I want to go to. Maybe both. <clears throat> Maybe both. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, how has the STARS program changed the way you spend your time on campus? Huh, a lot. Um, freshman year starting out, I was kind of like Anna. I would go to class and then go home because there really wasn't anything for me to do because I wasn't involved in any clubs at the moment. And then joining STARS, it definitely kind of gently forced me to stay because like Helen has always told us, going home where you have all of the distractions doesn't help you succeed in college life. So I would, now moving to sophomore year, I would go to the back and study and people would probably text me like, oh, where are you? I'm in the back, like school comes first. So you might not see me for a couple hours, but I'm putting my education first. What's the back? What's in the back? Oh, the star space. That's a secret. <laughs> Thank you. That's a secret. We can't say. No. So that's the little room that Anna referred to. Lauren calls the back. That's a secret. We can't. It's say. a secret. Yeah. All right. We can't know where the little room is, but it's in the back. <laughs> Thank you very much, Zeke. You've told us a little, but is there any more, anything else you want to say about how has changed the way you spend time on campus? I mean, really, it's. That, yeah, exactly what they said, word for word. I mean, uh, I'm, most schools, you go to school Monday through Friday, I'm still here Monday through Friday doing things. Like, Fridays we're either having meetings or I'm still here helping Helen with something. Like, there's nothing we can't do in the office, even if it's not school-related. Like, um, sometimes they get sick of me coming in every day because I'm there till like, 10 in the morning till That is night. very true. But... <laughs> But we um, uh, but I'm we're still there to get work done. It's not all fun and games, but you, you have fun, but you have your work time. I mean, that's how it is. But I mean, really, that's all. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So you've all alluded to this, but I'm wondering if there are any specific ways that the STARS program has changed the way you approach school, uh, particular assignments, academic challenges, papers, exams. Anyone want to speak to that? I guess I'll go first. Um, coming into college, I thought college was going to be hard. Like um, high school teachers have stressed to us that professors aren't there to help you and they don't really, but you guys are, don't worry. <laughs> um, but that coming to college and going into school of business was a changing because I realized that professors do care about you and they do make sure that you're doing your work and are on top of things. And in STARS, having the peer-to-peer -peer, um, perspective and the help coming from them who have had the teachers that I have really helps me because papers, I'm good, but I know I can improve. So having Nicole there, who is good at English, can is helpful to me. Great. Others? Specific academic tricks you learned through STARS or strategies? You can go ahead. Where y'all go? <laughs> um, I would say that um, whenever you need a help with an academic class or something, there's always someone. Like, you probably only see four of us here, but trust me, like, we fill up a room. Um, so there's always someone that's opened up to help you. If not, we have really big resources to tutors. Some of us are tutors. I'm not saying me, but um, some of the other members are tutors. So being a STARS member has like an open door to like everything. <laughs> okay, Zeke, I know you have something to say. Um, just being very punctual is very important with school, obviously. A lot of kids sleep in, skip class, but with me, I mean, I speak first and I'm always in class on time, or at least I try to be five, ten minutes late if possible. But I mean, it's it's better than not. It's better, it's better than not going to class. It's better than not going to class. But I'm saying, what I'm saying is like stars. We always, we, she always teaches us to be punctual and be on time, and I mean that's what drives me to do better in school is be there on time and get your work done on time. Helen is like our mom, like literally. Well, not literally, but that word has changed, hasn't it? It's in the dictionary now, it's figuratively, okay. 
It's so hard to be a grammar cop. Um, so, can you talk at all about how, if at all, being involved in the STARS program has influenced the way you live outside of school? Whether that's in personal life, thinking about how you want to spend your non-school time. Has there been any adjustments to that because of your involvement here? You may not have thought of this before. Well, I think um, being in STARS has really opened me to like learn more about another person and like understand where they're coming from because not everyone comes from the same background. And so um, I think that with opening people, or you know, taking people with open arms is pretty important, especially because we're all different. And um, as you take that out into your like work life, you understand that when you get into like the work field that not everyone's the same and that you should understand where everyone's coming from. So I think learning that in STARS and not only in STARS, but throughout my college career and me wanting to come back to school is like something that's helped me, so. Okay, so that's interesting because that didn't come up initially, but I'm curious if any of you have found that um, either with STARS or just in general, I know Dr. Uh, Vicki referred to how diverse we are, that we are, have the blessing at this campus of encountering a lot of people who are different from us. Can you talk at all about how that has affected your approach to your life and your school and thinking about the world? Um, well, like I said, when I started in STARS, I, well, I graduated from Munster High School in 2015, and so when I took on Paul as a mentee and started learning more about Paul and him not knowing like the basic functions of PEMDAS and me learning that in elementary school and know, me knowing that for such a long time and him coming to college and not knowing what those small things are, you really have to sit down and learn how to teach someone those things even though you are at a college level i think that starting small and then working your way up to learning more things is pertinent to the program. other students any experience with that being around people different from you with a different background lauren's nodding she's not grabbing at the mic though um coming from crown point high school it was diverse and then coming to college and even in the stars it was diverse in a different way coming to stars you are in a group where you don't know their full background um, you don't know their perspectives and going in the meetings and even with our mentee to mentor meetings it's kind of a breath of fresh air because you get that new perspective and you get to know a different background that you may not have known really was even there. So I think coming to STARS definitely opened my mind and to new perspectives and not to be so closed-minded, whether um, professionally and even personally. Great, thank you. Zeke? Oh, Anna. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Zeke, nothing there, okay. So now I'm curious about how being in STARS has affected the way your relationships with faculty. <laughs> the way you approach faculty. <laughs> the, way, the way you approach faculty. I think that being more involved in a school, like we're in the school, to, you know, school of business, and I think that with them seeing us all the time, they now know us as like, oh, you're always in the office, like you're always here, and then when Tinchin ran out, was like, hey, you need to be quiet back here because it's too loud for him. And um, I think that just they know us more of like, oh, you're, you're in stars. Like, we see you all the time. And I think that when you're around more, you learn more about the professors and they're, they're, they're more open to taking you into their office at any time. Others? Well, not just with professors, but with like us. I think we started off like being shy and being timid and like only like like hi bye, um, till where now it's like we're constantly texting each other. Like, not me, but I've heard that Helen is sometimes up at like one in the morning texting someone. Um, I don't like bothering people that night, that late at night, but um, but I I have a, one of my best friends is actually a stars. We talk about. Um, stars all the time. I mean, it's just 
we're a big family. <laughs> Has it changed the, your, your comfort level with approaching faculty? I'm sort of getting that that shyness. Yeah, because like Nicole said, they see us more often. So I feel like we're like kind of like a friend friend kind of thing now. So like you can walk up to them and be like, oh, I have a question about this. And they're like, oh, yeah, come in. Like, like yeah, we have time for you. Um, I know who you are. Some, sometimes they don't know us by names, but they know us by stars or you're always in the office. So they know us pretty well. Zeke? I mean, uh, I know a lot of them pretty well. A lot of them know me pretty well by first name. I mean, I know my uh, professor, Senor. I mean, Senora Rao. Uh, she um, she was very uh, close to me, not just because of the class, but also also off off like school subject. Anyways, like this summer, I was supposed to landscape her house. I'm sorry about that. But it never, it never, it never came around to it. But I mean, we we used to, uh, we used to connect on things like she'd call me in her office just to talk to me about how she was doing and all of that. I mean, you don't get a lot of teachers like that where that just want to express herself to the students, and she was open to do that. So I was like, okay, I'm not really doing anything. And then we'd have a 30 minute, maybe to like 45 minute conversation, just how your day was going. I mean. You don't get that at big campuses. That's what makes us different. Like, you really connect to your, like a father son, a mother daughter type thing. That's that's what it really is. So I want to I want to um, ask you specifically, Zeke, because you told a story about you were at a D D plus D minus. D minus, which I don't know why that's a grade, but that's for another conversation. It was a D. <laughs> So you had a D minus, and then you changed it to an A, maybe an A plus. Yeah. You know, um, so I'm curious about how your um, did you get? Were you having? Were your faculty kind of flabbergasted? I mean, <laughs> it's, I'm not going to talk crap about any professor because I'm still you. not. Thank you. I'm still not to. But, I didn't um, mean to invite that. No, no, no. But that's not that's not what I. But I'm a. Uh, I mean, it was more of a student type thing. It was it was more the students helping me yep. than the professor wise in that situation. I mean, that's all right because I mean, at the end of the year, I got to know the professor a little bit more at the end of class. I mean, it wasn't the best relationship as you wanted, but in that situation, it was more of a student type thing that helped me because my mentor really pushed me through that more than the teacher. Because we had four tests. That was our grade. We had one paper to make up all for those four tests we messed up and. I failed through the test, I did good on one, I did that eight page paper, and that's where it got me my grade was. I mean, but she was always open arms, I'm not gonna say anything bad about her, but she was always open arms about helping students and all that, I mean, some professors have work over just teaching like opening up wise, and you gotta understand that, and that's what students, like that's why you have your students there and your classmates there. I mean, I met classmates that were struggling in the same situation. It wasn't just me. And we ended up all passing, so it was good. Right, yeah. <laughs> applause, applause. So Anna, Lauren, and Zeke, you will all be mentors this year. And is this your first time? For me, yes. Yes. Lauren, second time. This will be my second time. And Zeke, first time. Okay, so I'm especially interested um, First, from um, Anna and Zeke, how are you feeling about that? How will you approach that? What are you thinking about being in this role as opposed to having been in, a, in the receiving role of mentorship? Um, I feel like I have a big, big role now. Um, I was a little nervous, but then meeting Miguel, um, I found out he was, he's actually a junior this year too. So. I feel like I have connection with him because we're gonna have the same classes. We're gonna we're gonna probably have the same professors. So I feel like we're gonna have like a sister brother bond quickly. As in, if he was a freshman, I would have to teach him how to go from where I was to where I am now. Um, so I'm very very thankful that I got who I have now. <laughs> uh, it's a bigger responsibility, of course, but I change much not really because you're still there. For mentee, like co I had a co mentee. His name was Gerald, and I mean, we both helped each other through thick and thin. So, I mean, it's really you helping the mentor, and the mentor's helping you. So, I mean, even if you do change the mentor, you're still doing that role. It's just that big responsibility. It's just that name, mentor. 
that you have to keep on task with that person now. But I mean, you're still helping them, they're still helping you. So I mean, there's not really much of a difference to me. So it sounds like you're talking about a co-mentee that you had last year where you mentored each other. I mean, we had Sam, she was our mentor, but we were co-mentees, like we, Sam oh, had two mentees. Oh, I see, you mentees. were both mentors yeah. of her. Yeah, Sam had two mentees. And that caused you to create a relation of helping mm -hmm. one another. Yeah, and we mm -hmm. were, I mean, we were always loud in the back, but we, we'd always, uh, we were always connected, like us three were always good. I mean, Helen always saw us together, so. And Lauren, can you talk about what your first year as a mentor was like and what you learned from that? My first year was, okay, my first semester was scary and rocky because I've never been put in that mentor role. I was obviously a mentee to Chase, actually, my freshman year. And to be a mentor, like I said, was rocky and nerve-wracking. Um, my mentee knows that. She actually graduated with me, graduated from Crown Point, and she knows a little bit about me. She knows I get nervous easily. Um, Moving, ooh, moving through spring semester, it kind of grew to a friendship because I, I didn't think of her as a freshman to a sophomore base. I thought of her as this is someone who is in the, still in college life with me. How can I help her achieve her goals and her dreams in the college year and in the four years that she will be here? Um, now, going into my second year of mentoring, I'm gonna still going to try to keep that mentality. I don't want to think of them as a mentee, but more as how can I help them achieve their goals and their desires in the college. Thank you. Nicole, how did being a mentor, is it, do you find yourself doing any sort of mentoring in your job? I mean, I guess you've only been there for a few months, but has yeah. that influenced that at all? No, and I think that my first year as a mentor also helped me as a person because, like Lauren said, when you start out your first year, you never really had that opportunity before. And I think that um, being a mentor to Paul was life-changing for him as well because he didn't really, like I said, didn't really have like a strong homebody and um, needed all the help that he could get. And so I was more of there um, to lead him with, like, guide him through college and let him know that, you know, like things are okay. Like you just have to take it a day at a time and move, move forward. But, um, being a mentor is like, like Zeke said, it's a huge shoe to fill, but you gotta be there like, like your mom. So it's, it's a good time. So. Thank you. Okay. So this one is about the future to the extent that you can think about that. Maybe more than I do, I hope. Um, how has being involved in this program influenced the way you think about your future? I'll, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Um, uh, Future-wise, it's, you try to think yourself and school, but, I mean, like us all together-wise, but future-wise, this opens a lot of responsibilities, of course, but it's, um, I mean, Helen's always there pushing out opportunities. Like, there's not one thing. She's always trying to find something else to do. Like, there's another, it's not like going to be the same year every year. Like, she always tries to find four or five things more to do. So, I mean, future wise, it's what you bring out in those situations. Because, I mean, we go to Indy in a couple months and we meet a lot of people there. I mean, we meet people from all IU campuses and most of them, right? I mean, all well, nationwide, it's nationwide we meet people. So I mean, you meet, that's your connections there you build in the business world. So I mean, if you're going to that or even if you come back and you're with us, I mean, that it's, it's still great opportunities. It's what you make of it. So I'm gonna ref refine that question to the extent that you're able to answer and I'm not gonna torture you. How might your thoughts about your future have changed from the way you were thinking about your future when you first came to IU Northwest to now? If at all. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> um, it's okay, if you're not dwelling on your future, that's okay. 
Okay, well, I guess I can start because I'm not really a student anymore, but um, STARS has, like, really put a, like, huge place in my heart, and I, that's why when Helen asked me if, you know, to come back for this event, I was down for it. I'll take a PTO day. That's fine with me. I don't have to work. Come here and, and talk about my, my heart. So um, I think that it really lines you up for the future because now it's really motivated me to come back to get a master's degree here. Um, like Lauren said in the beginning, you come here, you, you come home, you go to school, you go home, and it's really not all about that. And so it's being in the STARS programs made me want to be more involved in the campus. Even though I am an alumni now, I'm thinking about getting a master's degree now. So, Did you think you would go to graduate school when you first came to college? No way. I was like, I can't do this anymore. Get out of here. <laughs> now here I am. Fantastic. So. so is there anything else that you want to share? You've got people in the audience, faculty and staff, all of whom exist and are here because of you all and people like you and their jobs are to help you do what you do. Is there anything else that you want to tell them while you have the opportunity? I mean, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody for giving your time and we appreciate it. And I mean, we just, we're lucky enough to even be on the stage to talk about this. I mean, you guys didn't have to take time out of your day to do this and we just, I just want to thank you guys. Anyone else? Lauren, we'll let Helen go last. Oh, wow. See, you kind of stole mine. Um, I do want to say thank you, especially to the professors that I have had and will in the future have. Thank you for taking the time to help our, the students and even myself grow academically, professionally, and even give us life lessons throughout your class. So thank you. That's all right. I'm not going to force you. Helen, what's, what's your, what's your, what do you want to tell everyone? So while the idea of peer-to-peer -peer mentoring is not a new concept, it's out there, it tends to be more campus-directed. And our spin on it and the way in which it's been received from all my colleagues now globally is the fact that it's discipline-specific because that makes a larger difference because Nicole, for example, as a senior, had already seen and been in all the courses that her mentee, Paul, was going to experience. So she could speak directly to the fact of why psychology is important in business, what you're gonna do with accounting, how to get through the math, et cetera, because it's very one-to-one -one as opposed to also showing them the ways around the campus, which is important as well, of course, that's what we're about. But it's getting into those academic success. You can do this because I did it. And I understand what those courses are gonna require of you and why you're going to need it, et cetera. So keeping it discipline specific is paramount. The other thing I'd like to say is that STARS, you might've heard the, the comments, STARS is not a club. It's not an extracurricular in that sense. It is an experience program full of opportunities, full of growth, full of lifeblood here in front of me. And seated, seated in the row um, there as well are three more of my stars that you'll see later um, at the end of the day. So it is an experience, it's a program, it's full of opportunities for the students and it is amazing it's just so amazing and diversity wise it has taught me a lot I never had an app on my phone before I met them and the only way I can survive to, to be their mom is to have apps on my phone they've taught me that in turn I also teach them because as students they're so used to that syllabus that's this, 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 that everything they have to know right ahead of time. And as many of us know here at IU Northwest, we get a call at noon and something's due at three. So 
that's been kind of my take with them too, is to tell them that the real world is gonna require you to be adaptable and you didn't have a syllabus ahead of time to tell you that. So, STARS is my heart. Nicole, it looked like you wanted to respond. Is that my imagination? Okay. Well, I want to just, do we have any questions from the audience? I think we have a few minutes we can squeeze out of this. Is there anything you want to know? Yes, Marianne. Oh, yeah, let's hear about your off-campus job. What are you juggling in addition to school? Oh, I'm sorry. Marianne said she didn't hear any of the students talk about their off-campus jobs, and she wonders how they manage that in the context of school. I was uh, working at Foot Locker the whole year in the mall. I mean, it was a very difficult task. To, I'd have to call off work sometimes there. This is way more important in my perspective. So, I mean, even that, I mean, you have to juggle that. It's up to you. You can't be a full-time student or full-time worker. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's a very slim chance you can do that. And I had to manage that very well. And even over the summer, I was I needed to be here and manage very well that I couldn't be here all the time, but I did my best to be here as much as I can. But through the school year, you it's all about time management and you difficult. I mean, it was a little difficult at times, but it's about time management. Um, so I actually, where I work now is um, a transportation company actually in Gary. Um, I acquired, I actually went to a networking event through Helen's career planning and it was a marketing event with all of the employers that come in to try to recruit for either part-time jobs, full-time jobs, internships, and um, I acquired the internship at the transportation company and I started there as an accounting intern and now I'm a staff accountant there and I feel like if I didn't go to Helen's networking event I would never be where I am today and that's how that went. Lauren or Anna are you working off campus while you're being a full-time student? Yes can you no? Not full-time not full but part-time? I'm doing part-time yes. And is that how has that been a challenge for you to manage? Um, no, because they're really flexible, so whenever I have to be here, they, they really do understand. I currently work at um, a Mexican restaurant, El Himador and Holbert, so if you guys are hungry, I'm about to go run over there after this. Um, <laughs> go get you some margaritas before school starts. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, during the summer I did do full-time, um, but now that I'm starting school, they, do, they are aware that I'm going to be starting school Monday, so I am doing only part-times. But being here has helped me um, be more manageable time-wise and work. Um, I have a really big OCD, so I have everything really, really big organized back there. Um, Self-awareness. <laughs> so I feel like if I wouldn't have been here, if I wouldn't have met a Helen, if I wouldn't have been tried to open up more, I would have not been a good server because I would have just been like, can I get your order and I'm, I'm done and go. But no, I, I feel like all, the, all of our customers there are really, are like also my family. I actually, I actually know two of them. <laughs> They're our regulars. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, most of them are pretty regular. I think regulars. you owe them a discount now. <laughs> um, yeah. And if it wasn't for for that for my work job, I would have not met a lot of great a lot of my regulars. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren, are you juggling a job in school? Kind of. Um, I actually work with my mom at a consulting com company. So she's probably pretty flexible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she knows school comes first, and then if I do need to kind of take a day for stars, it's more than fine. Got it. Well, and Lauren I'd actually works in the School of Business and Economics office as a student intern with us, so we're, I'm very flexible with her hours there, too. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to have our students um, leave the stage, and we're going to switch this slide out, and I just wanted to let you know that as you're leaving after the program is over today, the students have set up their poster session table that they have used in some of these events, and they will be there to talk to you further. Can we cue up the Star Wars music now, again? I think this is an appropriate time. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you all very much, very much for being here. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is James Wallace, the Director of the Office of Diversity 
here on this campus, and I do not know how our actors do this with these lights. This is really uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> but I am uh, also serving on the uh, Bicentennial Planning Committee for this campus, so it's fallen to me to share with you some information about some upcoming activities to celebrate 200 years of academic excellence at Indiana University. You know what, let me, let me do that. So what I'm gonna share with you today, um, review some of the activities that we've had so far to date, um, talk a little bit about some upcoming activities that are gonna be happening on our campus, uh, some university-wide opportunities to be involved, some bicentennial medal information to celebrate individuals who have made significant contributions to Indiana University, and talk about a, a few closing events that'll take place at IU Bloomington. So, so far since 2016, what has, what has the Office of the IU Bicentennial done? Well, there have been a number of projects that have been supported, and we just found out yesterday that Dr. Selena Saunders was supported with a Bicentennial Project grant. Um, there's been course, course grants. There's been a number of conferences that have taken place around the university, three of which happened on our campus just last year. Um, over 1,200 oral history interviews have been conducted by paid student interns, and then there have also been a number of history blogs that have been created that are available on the IU history page. As far as this campus is concerned, there have been a number of activities that have taken place. Just last year, last September, the campus hosted the 10th anniversary of the South Shore Dance Alliance with a performance here in this theater. Uh, also, our colleagues from the School of Public and Environmental Affairs hosted the Indiana Blacks and Philanthropy Conference. The following spring, campus and community partners came together to host the Bicentennial 2020 Education Conference where we were able to explore opportunities to strengthen the pipeline of education here in Northwest Indiana. And the Center for Urban and Regional Excellence held the Bicentennial Community Engagement Celebration. Now the Office of Bicentennial also put together some Bicentennial Minutes and these are quick uh, videos that talk about unique portions of IU history. And the one we were getting ready to watch um, details the work of Steve McShane from the Calumet Regional Archives. There will be a number of Bicentennial Minutes produced over the course of the coming year, and those will also be available on the IU History page. Um, additional historical opportunities. Uh, there have been a number of oral histories, over 1,200 that have been collected, um, and the digitization of our campus newspapers will be completed in the spring of 2020. So starting off this year, July 1st, um, what activities have kicked off the bicentennial year in this 2020 academic, 2019-2020 academic year? The bicentennial, the first bicentennial medal was awarded to Governor Holcomb. Um, the first um, bicentennial activity which was a softball game at IU South Bend. Bicentennial boxes, gift boxes were sent to the campuses around the state and the campus transformation took place, as you've probably observed, with banners that hang on the light posts around campus. Now, speaking of the Bicentennial Meadows, um, there was a student center in IU Bloomington. There was a fire, there were bells in this tower. The bells were preserved and they were melted down and the university created over a thousand Bicentennial Medals. And these medals are to be given to individuals who are nominated from the campuses who have made significant impact on those campuses. So since there's a thousand of these things, the Office of the Bicentennial is asking folks to consider who those individuals are. And these individuals can be awarded these medals at both formal and informal activities. So it asks for our, all of our campuses to put on their thinking caps, identify those individuals, submit those nominations, so that these people can be recognized for their contributions to Indiana University. 
So now we move on to the fall. What events do we have upcoming? As mentioned earlier, our bicentennial professor will be making a number of public presentations. Um, Bill Allegreza will talk about literature and poetry. Uh, and there's, he, had a, he had an event maybe a week or so ago, and he has two more that have been scheduled, and I'm sure that there'll be more that are scheduled throughout this academic year. At IUPUI, they have the regatta each year. I don't know how many people are familiar with that, but there's a canal that runs through downtown Indianapolis. They have teams of students that jump in canoes and they race down this canal. The Office of the Bicentennial is encouraging all of the campuses to send students down to participate in this. I think we have um, a student group, student government, that are going to participate in that. So that's another exciting opportunity um, to participate in this activity. On our campus, there will be two historical markers that will be dedicated. The first will be dedicated on September 26th at 11 a.m., and that's to commemorate Tamarack Hall. And there's a planning committee on campus that's currently working. We met just this week to put that event together. Weather permitting, it'll be outdoors. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Also, on September 27th will be the Faculty Research Day that Dr. Ramon Lagunas mentioned earlier, where faculty will be able to share their passion for the work that they do and its impact on our region, state, and the world. Now, another exciting development, the IU Office of the Bicentennial has created a touring bus that has artifacts from all of the IU campuses. We've put in a request to have this bus uh, on our homecoming on November 2nd, and they're asking for requests for activities where the bus can come and be a compliment to, uh, not the main event, but something to complement something that's already happening on our campuses around the state. So you're encouraged to get those requests in early so that you can get on the schedule because it's expected to go to every county in the state this academic year. On September 28th, will be the Bicentennial Festival at IU Bloomington. And this will include a robed event in the IU Auditorium down there at IU Bloomington. You should have received an invitation from the Office of Bicentennial to register for that if you plan on attending. Um, that'll be from 10 to 12, and afterwards, there'll be a festival in the parking lot of the football stadium where um, IU was going to take on Michigan State University. I'm sure Dr. Lowe will, will be watching it on the edge of his seat <laughs> as an MSU grad. And um, a celebration in the parking lot, food trucks, games, and hold on to your seats, the world's largest bouncy house. <laughs> An ankle breaker for sure. In the spring, we're planning some events. Um, as mentioned earlier, the The Bicentennial falls on January 20th, 2020, which is also happens to be uh, the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. The offices of the Bicentennial is encouraging all of our campuses to coordinate day of service activities. We have service, the service of education for our state, and we have the day on of service of activities within our communities. And I'm putting myself out there. If you have ideas of things that you want to do, you know, send them to me. Let's talk about them, how we can have some sort of comprehensive activity that will be meaningful and valuable for the people in this community. So connect with me so that we can make something like that happen. Um, April 3rd and 4th, Beyond Boundaries, Indiana's Academic Symposium, chaired by our own Dr. Sharika Rao. Uh, this event will bring together state academic academies and institutions and organizations to discuss 200 years of academic excellence. Um, hopefully we'll be well rep represented at this event. And then some additional activities that will be taking place, another state historical marker on May 18th, 2020, an alumni reunion at IU Bloomington and at IUPUI. And then on June 6th, there will be some final activities where Big Red 200 Supercomputer will go online. Uh, the Carillion will be dedicated with the ringing of the bells at the IU Arboretum. And the beginning of the Grand Expedition, which will take our students all around Europe um, that are taking classes over that summer. So um, 
another opportunity to to in, engage. Now, for, as far as volunteer opportunities, um, of course, they're looking for volunteers for the 200th festival I mentioned on September 28th. And then, you know, they're asking for assistance with mailings and things of that nature to get folks in our community involved with the activities that will be taking place around the state. So with that, thank you for your time. And I'll turn it back over to Dr. Ramon Lagunas. Okay, so we're not done yet. Um, one of the looking forward pieces that we have is that IU Northwest will be participating in the open pathway to reauthorization of accreditation by the Higher Learning Commission. That's a lot of words. Um, without going into many details, part of this pathway to accreditation requires that we participate in a quality initiative, a three to four year commitment to a project that will impact the entire campus. For this initiative, we've chosen to be participants in the Higher Learning Commission's Student Success Academy. We will establish a team from across our campus who will design a plan to enhance and systematize our efforts towards student success. This is a three-year commitment. The first year is essentially to collect and analyze data. The second is to design a plan, and the third is to implement the plan. I'm looking forward to this, and I hope you all are too. Here's what we're asking for you to do today. Since this is the beginning of the first year in which we have to collect data from our campus, we're asking you all to pull out your phones and take a survey for us. It will take you no more than three minutes, I'm told. Mark? Not even. Not even. Okay, and the instructions are here, and if we run into any technical challenges, Mark is our um, guru. All done. Okay, so if you're still working on it, that's fine. Um, I want to thank you for being my captive audience for this first of our data collections. We'll be asking for more over the year from all of you. Um, this information is going to be sent to the leaders of the Student Success Academy, and we will get the results back from them as well. I need to, it's my, I guess, pleasure to remind you that we have a wonderful lunch after today's meeting, and I hope to see all of you there. Also want to remind you all that Monday is our student, new student induction ceremony, and I'm asking you all to please, if you're teaching classes that are at the 100 and 200 levels, around 11.45, Send your students this way, but accompany them, please. We'd love to see all of you here, um, and we'd love to welcome our students um, to a new year and, and to our community. So we'll see you all at 11.45 on, on Monday. And finally, I just want to tell you I'm grateful again and looking forward to the next year of our new journey, and hope you have a wonderful day. <laughs>